a sub substantial expenditure, you know, something where there's a lot of money on the table. It, is it this that you, you mentioned before, the four points about how cash is, how it's going to affect the cash? Is that, are those really the, the typically the key success factors that are going on in the, the finance evaluation and what's driving the modeling and driving the, the, the view on the, the goodness or badness of a particular yeah, so, you know, in short, yes, right? They may be measured in different ways, right? Companies will have different, you know, KPIs that they will, that they will use to get to, you know, those, um, sort of those ultimate goals, right? So, uh, the, the KPIs that they're measuring may be, you know, may have different titles, they may have different um, terminology that they're using within the organization. I think that's, you know, as we talk to Sam, that's an important part, right? So you need to understand what are the KPIs of the organization and make sure that any benefits you have and you're putting into the language of the customer and helping them truly understand what, uh, how you're impacting the things that they've highlighted that matter most to them. And you, know, you may have great terminology that works with your largest customer. Somebody else might, might use different language internally. Make it easy for them. Right? Change your uh, change your analysis so it fits their language and fits their their thinking, so it's easy for them to retell that story internally in their in, in, inside their organization and share your story, share your benefit in the language of your customer. And Chris, should I? You know, I'm a Sam. I'm, I've got this new thing that I'm going to propose to you. I'm 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 doing some discovery within the customer to. You know, figure out this. Out. So I should be asking those questions. What are the What are the key KPIs? How are, How will you measure that? These kind of things I should be asking again before the the RFP goes out. These are things that I should be make part of my discovery process. Is that what I'm hearing? They should be part of your discovery process. I think there's a fair amount of that information if you have a public customer that you can find out uh, from a you know before you go into the meeting. You know, I, I always found, you know, when someone came in and wanted to talk to me and, you know, they were asking me, you know, what were our earnings last quarter? You know, that was a very short meeting, right? Because they clearly had no, they didn't spend any time on our business. If they came in and said, you know, last quarter you get, you earned X and you were, you know, you were, you didn't have as much growth as your peers or you outgrew your peers and asked a question like, you know, what do you attribute that difference to? Like, that's a much better question. Somebody not only understands our business, but understands where we are relative to our, our peer set. Um, and, you know, listen to the earnings calls. Right? There's a lot of great opportunities to get information on both public and private companies. Uh, but definitely, you, know, you want to do your homework. You want, you want to be going in with a view and a, a set of information that you're looking for people to, uh, to confirm, to provide non-public or more detailed information to you. Um, and the best way to do that is to, is to, you know, start with having a good base of information and then asking some great open-ended questions. 